Okay guys, so in this video we're going to do a few examples of applying the concept of molecular orbital for second period elements, both, both homo and heteronuclear molecules. And just as a reminder before we start with the examples that there are two different types of energy diagrams that are possible for the second period elements. And remember that up till nitrogen you're going to use this particular ranking of molecular orbitals, sigma 2s, sigma 2s stars and then pi 2p and sigma 2p and then pi 2p star and sigma 2p star whereas if you have oxygen or fluorine as your template then that would be the following energy diagram which is sigma 2s sigma 2s star and the only thing that's different really is the flipping here between the pi 2p and the sigma 2p that was written in the previous energy diagram okay so one of them is flipped all right so we're going to start with the first example and this is example 3 in your lecture slide and it just says compare the molecules O2, O2 plus and O2 minus the molecular ions and draw the MO energy diagram and electron configuration answer the following question what's the bone order for each of the species and then which molecule is uh, predicted to have the strongest bond which molecule is predicted to be diamagnetic okay because they're all oxygen then we're going to use the oxygen molecular orbital diagram so I'm going to start it in the next slide I'm going to use black color right here O2 right so we're going to have three of them so O2 plus is our second one and then O2 minus okay now what you have to remember is you have to draw your energy diagram first I'm going to do it right here so remember that this is for oxygen you're going to have the Sigma first before the pi and then you have the pi star and then the sigma 2p star right so then we can fill this up sigma 2s sigma 2s star sigma 2p pi 2p pi 2p star and then sigma 2p star and then what you have to do is just repeat it for the other ones as well okay to fill up the electron configuration what you're going to need to do is you need to calculate valence electron right so what is the valence electron for oxygen the molecule well remember oxygen is its group 6a so if you have o2 that means you have 2 times 6 right which is 12 electrons and then you just need to fill that up for the electron configuration so you do 1 2 3 4 5 6 now here's where it's important to notice that you now have a degenerate orbital right in the pi 2p they have the same energy so you're going to deal out the electron one at a time just as Hunt's rule tells you so you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and then 11, 12 okay so that will be the electron configuration for oxygen now what you should do now is try to do the same thing for O2 plus and O2 minus I'm going to just do it for you but you should stop the video and really try to fill it up for yourself for both O2 plus and O2 minus. Okay, so if you go ahead and do that, you should get these results for O2 plus and O2 minus. You get valence being 11 for O2 plus and 13 for O2 minus. And then if you fill up the electron configuration, you get these results. Now we move on to our next question, which is what's the bond order for each one of them? Now, bond order calculation, you have to go back to one of the earlier videos that discuss bond order and remember that it's just the number of electrons in the bonding molecular orbitals minus the number of electrons in the non-bonding molecular orbitals divided by two so what are the bonding molecular orbitals well they are the ones without stars around them right so it's these guys this this those are the bonding molecular orbitals so if you look at calculation you'll find that in the bonding molecular orbitals you have one two three four five six seven eight minus the start ones four divided by two so that gives you 2.0 and then for this one I'm just gonna mark the star right here and then we have star and star okay and so one order right here would be 8 um, 8 minus 3 okay divided by 2 which gives us 2.5 and then lastly, the bone order for this one would just be if you do the same calculation, you get 8 minus 5 divided by 2, which is 1.5. Okay, so then the next question you want to ask is which molecule is predicted to have the strongest bond? Remember that bond order is directly proportional to bond strength. So then the one that has the strongest bond would be O2 plus because that has the largest bond order. Okay, and then the last question is switch molecules are predicted to be diamagnetic. Here again, you have to go back to the earlier video on para and diamagnetism. It, it's a very simple concept. Basically, if you have all your electrons paired, 
than their diamagnetic, whereas if even you have one unpaired electrons, then that's paramagnetic. If you look at all these three species, none of them is all paired, right? There's always one, at least one unpaired electron. So in other words, these, all the species of oxygen that we have here are all paramagnetic, so none of them is diamagnetic, okay? No diamagnetic species in this particular case, okay? Before we move on, let me mention how important this discovery was, emphasize the importance of the molecular orbital model. Let's look at this oxygen alone, okay? When you look at oxygen here, you notice that the electron configuration immediately tell you that it's a paramagnetic species because it has the uh, single unpaired electrons, okay? Now, before MO was developed, people were having a difficult time explaining the property of oxygen. The reason being the following. If you try to draw a low structure of oxygen, remember oxygen has 12 electrons, right? So a lot of times what people would do is draw oxygen as follows. The lowest structure, which is fine. Here you have both of them satisfy the octet rule, and then you have two atoms with zero formal charges. So this looks like the greatest lowest structure you can draw for oxygen. And of course, what it tells you here is that oxygen has a double bond. It's a pretty strong bond. However, because all the electrons are paired, then it, oxygen is also predicted to be diamagnetic. Okay? Now, when you do experiments with oxygen, it turns out that people find experimentally that oxygen is actually paramagnetic. In other words, it has magnetic properties. And I'm going to show you a picture in the next slide, which shows you the paramagnetic nature of oxygen. So here what happens is you're pouring liquid oxygen through a pair of magnetic poles. Okay, so here's your magnetic pole uh, north and south. And if this liquid is diamagnetic, it's just going to run through this without actually being held by the magnet at all. However, when you look at oxygen, it's clear from this picture that the oxygen is actually being held and being stuck right there to the magnet. So in other words, the molecules of the oxygen can be attracted to the magnets. And that's what we call a paramagnetic behavior. Now, like I said, with the Lewis structure alone, you wouldn't be able to predict that because all the Lewis structure will indicate is this is a diamagnetic molecule, okay? Now, some people try to draw oxygen a different way where they say, well, we can try to draw oxygen with single electrons using Lewis structure, and this is what they did. They move each of these pair of electrons to each of the oxygen atoms, so then they end up with drawings that look like this, okay? One... Uh, electron on each oxygen, which then would say that because these are unpaired electron, they would be paramagnetic. But you see what the problem with this is that now the bond becomes a single bond, which means that it's a weaker bond. But we know in experiment that oxygen is both paramagnetic and has a strong bond. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that with Lewis structure, you can get to either one, one of the experimental observations, but you can't explain both of them. Now, molecular orbital easily explain both of them because, first off, the electron configuration shows that it's paramagnetic, and secondly, the bond order is actually a really, you know, a relatively large bond order, 2.0, which implies that it's a fairly strong bond, right? So, that's one of the really important discoveries of the molecular orbital model. So, the last question we want to do is example four in your lecture slide. We have an example using heteronuclear diatomic molecules. So, in this case, we're supposed to uh, work with NO plus and NO minus ions. Uh, and we can even do this with NO as well to you know, complete the picture here. So we got NO, NO plus, and NO minus. Remember, NO was one of the issues that we have initially with the Lewis model because it has an odd number of electrons. But as you can see in this, using the MO model, we don't really have an issue with odd number of electrons. Okay, So the question is the same, which is that what is the magnetic property and compare the bond strengths. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and do this for all three of them. So I'm going to draw three panel again. So we have NO to do, and then NO plus, and then NO minus, okay? Now again, the first thing you want to figure out is just valence before you start drawing the energy diagram. So NO is uh, 11, NO plus would then be 10, and then NO minus would then be 12, okay? Now, let's uh, think about what energy diagram to draw. Remember what I said in the previous video, is if you have a heteronuclear diatomic molecule, you have to be given this information as far as which particular energy diagram template to use. Now, in this case, it tells you to use the energy di diagram that's similar to N2. So then we would have to draw the N2 energy diagram, which, remember, is just one. 2, but then instead of sigma, you have pi first, and then sigma, and then pi, 
and then sigma. So you got sigma 2s, sigma 2s star, pi 2p, sigma 2p, pi 2p star, and sigma 2p star. Okay. Once you know the electron configure uh, the energy diagram, then the rest of it is just filling this up with electrons. So you're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, and then you can go ahead and do it for the other ions as well. I'm going to do this right now, uh, and you can stop the video, fill it out, and then compare it to my answer. So if you do it for both of these uh, ions, you should get the following answer. Okay, so this is what it looks like once you uh, finish drawing the electron configuration. And what we need to do to answer other questions, bond strength and magnetic properties, is we uh, basically, for bond strength, we need to calculate bond order magnetic properties we just need to look at the electron configuration so if you were to calculate bond order in this case remember it's just a number of bonding minus anti-bonding divided by two so in this case we're going to have eight minus one two uh, three so that gives you 2.5 this one we have this is our uh, anti-bonding right market here so we can easily do the calculation Bone order here is going to be 8 minus 2 divided by 2, which is 3. And then uh, this one would be 8 minus 4 over 2, which is 2. Okay. And this actually, so if you if you compare relative bond strength, then uh, NO plus would be the strongest bond, right, followed by NO, followed by NO minus. Okay. Now, this is actually not, this is actually in agreement with Lewis, the Lewis model, the villains bond model, because you remember, if you draw Lewis structure for NO plus and NO minus, we can't do it for NO, but we can do it for NO plus and NO minus. It turns out that you would have this, for NO minus, you would have this structure, whereas for NO plus, you have this structure, okay? So, even if you draw Lewis structure, it indicates that NO plus is going to be a stronger bond because it's triple bond versus a double bond and here you get the same piece of information but additionally you also get information about magnetism right so in this case if you look at magnetic properties both NO and NO and NO minus right so NO minus has single electrons NO as well so both of them will be paramagnetic right para and then this guy here, NO+, plus, because all of the electrons are paired, then it's going to be diamagnetic. Okay? All right. So that hopefully clears up the examples of how to use molecular orbital energy diagram and how to predict bond strength, relative bond strength, and bond length as well. We didn't really do bond length, but you know that bond length is just inversely proportional to bond strength, so you can use the same idea to figure out bond length, measure, uh, relative bond lengths. And then... Lastly, uh, magnetic behavior also, we can uh, determine that whether it's para or diamagnetic.